Alrighty, everyone out there. So, we are heading into part three of DSP Reacts to Down the Rabbit Hole Dark Side Phil. If you have not yet watched the first two parts, I strongly urge you to do so because they give tons of background information, side stories you weren't aware of, all kinds of elaboration and actual context to the events of this video that over six million people have viewed and didn't know the context. <laughs> okay, so now, <clears throat> excuse me, let's continue. If you remember, we were in the middle of the saga here where basically people had just started, this is how you don't play. And I was arguing that, yeah, it really did concretely hurt me back then because there were people who used to watch my content and the only income I had back then was ad revenue on my content. That was it. I wasn't anyone who had crowdfunding or any other kind of contributions. So knowing well that people were going to watch my content on other people's channels and not on my own was concretely hurting my business. And maybe it was a big reason for the decline in my viewership at that time. Although I admit, I probably shouldn't have gotten as angry as I did at that time. It probably would have helped things, okay? Um, quick reminder, <clears throat> if you are watching this on demand on YouTube, you can help out. If you're enjoying this series and you want to see more like it, please consider liking this video, leaving a comment on it, and a new feature you can do is a super thanks. It's a way to leave a highlighted message that actually contributes to the channel and supports it. Thank you very much to anyone who helps in any way. Without further ado, let's continue. Here we go. One user criticized Philip's belief that his Let's Play <clears throat> videos were works of art and that the game and his commentary are his ingredients to create it. They're $60. I paid them their fee to utilize the ingredients to make my work of art. That's a detractor video he's watching. <laughs> you serious? Though he was Spider Man clip. Just, so just to, just so you guys know, if you see any comments pop up on the screen that aren't white, those are not Fredericks. Those are from the detractor video he's referencing. That clip was from a detractor video. Okay. So the argument we're making here is what is fair use and what makes a let's play or a video game playthrough legal. My argument has always been. That if you just boot a game and you just sit at the title screen, right? That's the extent that you can do in a video game without actually having this input. And the moment that a gamer pays a license, a licensing fee, to access the code of that game and then decides that they're going to play the game, that that moment they start playing is now their own unique experience and they've created a work of art with it. If you're going to argue that video games are art, you can't therefore then argue that the video gameplay is also not art. They go hand in hand, all right? So when someone on, on YouTube, a video game company like Bandai Namco, claims a gameplay video and says, no, we own that. Like, now, wait a minute. How? Yes, I paid you a licensing fee to play your game, but then I used your game to create my own creative work, i.e. my own work of art. Therefore, that work of art is my property, not yours. At most, the thing that you could probably try to do is claim a portion of of the income or revenue that I make with that video, but there's no way, shape, or form you own my whole video. That's completely backwards asinine, and if that went to court, that would not hold up in a court of law, in my opinion, all right? <clears throat> and that's always what I've argued, but what people try to say is skew my words and say, oh no, Phil just says that video game playthroughs are full works of art, and you should always own everything. No, the, th the truth of the matter is, it's never gone to court. You've never seen someone sue over a video game playthrough or let's play. And therefore, there is no legal precedent for it yet. If someone eventually does that, we may have clarity. What happens is most people who make let's plays or playthroughs are allowed to do so because the game companies see it as not only fair use, but free advertisement. It's like, okay, we're going to get free publicity out of this footage. Why on earth would we strike it down? Why would we stop someone? from trying to do that. It wouldn't even make sense when you're getting something for free out of it. Although some people have argued that if you're doing a full Let's Play, that now you're using too much of the content and now someone might not want to actually play that video game, especially if it's a narrative-based game and the narrative was just completely spoiled. So it could basically be argued either way. But with no legal precedent, no one can ever say someone's right or wrong. Who is someone to laugh at me and say that my opinion on this is wrong with no factual basis? It just makes them look more stupid. Ha ha ha. Oh, J. Jonah Jameson laughs at you because he thinks you're serious. Well, hey, J. Jonah, can you reference the court case when it says I'm, I'm wrong? Oops, you can't because you're stupid. Just like that argument against me is stupid. Okay. Gaining newfound notoriety, it wasn't enough to change the downward trend of his viewership. 
As more and more of these videos proliferated, public opinion against Philip worsened, as did his viewer count, and more internet denizens became aware of his existence through a negative paradigm. Even switching over from using a video camera to direct capture could staunch the leaking viewership. That's when I switched. 2013, I started direct capture and live streaming because people had basically said at that point, like, dude, you've got to swap or you're just going to die. Like, you're going to kill your own channel if you don't adapt. So on a whim one day, my friend John Rambo was over. We were going to do co-op gameplay. I said, fuck this camera. Let's just go to Best Buy. We ran to Best Buy. We bought an, a, uh, uh, what was it, a HD PVR 2 and a Elgato capture device. Plugged it in, started using it, and just used direct capture from then on. To make matters worse, Machinima had again cut his pay in early 2013, Correct. increasing Philip's financial strain. They did it to everyone However, again. However, with his Watch AdSense account disabled indefinitely and his public image souring, Philip had little recourse. To supplement his income, he began streaming on a new platform called Twitch, which offered an online venue for gamers to play games and interact with fans live. But even here, he couldn't escape trouble. He became known for banning and censoring people with negative comments, as well as berating and insulting his viewers. Some people just aren't as intelligent. I don't even know what else to say, because if you're in my stream right now and you're whining and stomping your feet like a five-year-old brat, uh, you're just making yourself look bad. Again, Frederick didn't put that comment. This is the detractor video he's replaying, okay? It's funny. Most egregious to his fan base was when his girlfriend, Liana, derided the game Kingdom Hearts 2 in the chat section while Philip was playing it. And now, I think this may be factually wrong because I remember it as Kingdom Hearts 1, but I could be wrong. I swear it was the finale of Kingdom Hearts 1, where I was in the final sequence. We were heading towards the end, but there was an insanely long gauntlet of enemies. Now again, I will claim fault on this. My ex was made a moderator on my Twitch TV channel. I don't know why I did that. That was my mistake, okay? Again, I'm crossing the boundaries of my personal life and my business. That was stupid, and it, all it did was cause more drama, okay? Obviously, knowing someone like her and that she was confrontational, this was probably going to cause problems with the viewership. I stupidly did it anyway. So, what ended up happening was it caused problems. What a shocking situation. I remember this, that at the end of the playthrough of Kingdom Hearts 1, there was a crazy, endless gauntlet of enemies. It was taking forever to finish this game. I thought I was going to finish it in like 20 minutes, and it took me like two hours. I still wasn't done. So, as usual, I went on my usual diatribes. Oh my god, this game sucks. The game developers are assholes. Why did they do this? Yada, yada, yada. I went crazy. Well, my ex also decided to start going crazy on the game in the chat, and when people kind of countered her, and were like, no, the game's actually not that bad. Phil's just raging because either he sucks or because it's just a tough part of the game. This is a shake. She basically went on a banning spree. I remember she started banning people. They turned it into subscriber-only mode. All this shit was going on, okay? So at that time, I got big backlash for it, and it all got thrown against me. But that's my fault. Why did I create that situation? Why was I so adamant? on crossing my personal life with my business. I don't. I think it was because I was just dumb and ignorant and I wasn't smart enough to know that this was eventually going to come back to bite me and, and shoot me in the, in the foot. Um, <clears throat> to me, a lot of the times of all the things, the fun things that I did on YouTube, and this doesn't even just go for my ex, but for my, my previous friends, you know, John Rambo, who I did co-op with and all that. For me, whenever I made content for YouTube, it was like, um, it was like having fun, but also making money doing it. You know what I'm saying? It was never planned. Oh, this is serious business. And we have to so be attentive to make sure everything goes right. And we have to be, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't a studio. There wasn't a ton of people involved. It was usually just me or a friend or someone else with a camera fucking around. Like, that was the purpose of the videos, is to show genuine joy playing video games or doing a vlog on a trip or whatever it was. I never took it that seriously, okay? And I think what happened was eventually... It started to show in my content. He's not adapting direct capture. He's not doing live streaming. He's got his girlfriend in all of his videos, and she, we don't like her. We think she's obnoxious, and we tell him that, and he ignores us and says, fuck off, don't watch, but we like him. We want his content to succeed. Why doesn't he listen to us? I was stubborn and stupid, right? I was. I was just dumb, and I absolutely should have done direct capture earlier, streaming earlier. I should have not had my ex in my content. It should have all been me doing stuff, and that's the business, period. But to me, in my mind, it's like, hey, if I'm already going to have fun 
with the people I care about, right? My friends, my, my significant other, and I'm going to film it. Why not make money on it too? Just open, pop open the camera. But then it did. It seeped into the business. And this, this instance, as stupid as this sounds, and for a lot of people, they actually quit watching my content and my whole community. They were like, this is how it's going to be. Phil is literally just going to have his ex and everything. And she's going to ruin everything. And this is bad. And we don't want to be a part of that anymore. And some people jumped ship from watching my content to being part of these detractor communities when this happened. They were so upset with the fact that I was having this carryover of my personal life into my content. And it was my fault. Okay. When the chat devolved into argumentation, Philip locked the chat so that only subscribers could talk. Mm -hmm. The bad reputation from Philip had suddenly spilled over onto Liana, too. So, fuck all of you who are acting immature. No. This is what you. I hate to say it. There were already people who didn't like me. There's not people who didn't like me and then didn't like Liana, too. It was that they felt that she actually had a very, very confrontational uh, mannerism. She always wanted to be the center of attention. She always wanted to be the, t the, oh, look at me, I'm the best player in this, or that. People didn't like that. And if people disagree with her, she would be very in-your-face about it, confrontational. And people, that's why they didn't like her. It wasn't because, oh, because we already don't like Phil, so now it spills over to her. No, it was because she was very outspoken, and people didn't like the things that she was being outspoken about, and it really rubbed people the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, now. We're putting it in the sub-only mode fucking idiots i'm here trying to play a fucking game it's hard to concentrate when a bunch of little immature sh philip continued <laughs> to quietly make videos and stream through 2013 as his viewership hemorrhaged and his detractors uploaded more and more this is how you don't play and parody dsp tries it videos oh i missed that patent 2014 yeah, saw major changes for philip Taking out more loans, he purchased a new condominium, this one in Seattle, Washington, bringing Liana to live with him. He believed that a new location would provide him with the motivation and energy to surge back into popularity, but this living situation proved problematic. Liana was unemployed and had no higher education, meaning Philip had to provide for both of them with his dropping income. His problems would worsen later in the year after a dispute with Twitch admins. At the time, Twitch's... So... This is true. Uh, you know, again, I take full responsibility for it. Okay, I absolutely do. It's my fault. I was the one who financed the whole move. I was the one who made the decisions, basically, around it. Um, although it was a group thing. I mean, we both agreed to do it. We wanted to move in together and move across the country. But I made very poor financial decisions. Incredibly poor. Financing the move. I, I emptied my bank account to pay for the move. And then I financed the rest of the move with credit cards and things. And it racked me up to my eyeballs in debt. All right. And it screwed me over. That's why to this day, I'm still in the financial dire straits from time to time that I'm in. And sometimes I'm going paycheck to paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's why. And it sucks because I made bad decisions and they I'm paying for them now to this day, eight years later, and we're still not done. It's going to be years and years possibly before I even get back on my feet because something else always seems to hold me up from recovering which really blows um <clears throat> and yeah when we moved out here of course my ex didn't have a job um she really didn't have much to do after about six months of living out here she was bored and that's when she had the idea she wanted to start her own soap making business guess who financed that my fault again this is all on me i financed it I'm the one who paid for everything behind the scenes to get it started. After it running for a few months, it actually started paying for itself. But it was me who did that initial investment in the hopes that it would turn a profit. Guess what? Guess what it didn't do? <laughs> right? Didn't turn a profit. It was a waste of time. As much as I pushed it on my, in my content and tried to, hey, everyone, buy some soap. Nobody, you know, you're going to sell a few here and there. You're going to get a few repeat customers. But it never got its feet on the ground. It was just a silly hobby that... We were trying to make a few bucks on here or there, and the only people who really bought it were my viewers. Honestly, there's maybe a few other people, but it wasn't that many. And that's, again, I'm the one who financed it. I'm the one who said, okay, you know? And, you know, again, I, it's just this this video, now that we're to this part, I have no defense for any of this stuff. I just don't. Like, this is all bad decision after bad decision after bad decision, and I completely own up to it. It's, my, it's on me. You know what I'm saying?
Okay. Servers were unable to handle too much bandwidth, and so, when Philip was streaming at a quality that the servers were unable to handle, they politely requested that he reduce the bitrate of his stream. Philip, annoyed, asked why other streamers could stream at higher bit rates, but the Twitch admin who contacted him remained firm that others did not, and that Philip must abide by the lie. rules as other content creators did. See, and this is my my ongoing problem with Twitch, favoritism, the way that they treat one person is completely different than the way they treat another person. So at this time, I've been streaming on Twitch since early 2013, and this was late 2014, so I've been there a year and a half, and for about a six-month period, I determined that their limitations of streaming at 3,500 kilobits per second were not sufficient to do any kind of good quality video. There were certain games, if you didn't up your bitrate to like 6,000 kilobits, the game was just a pixelated mess, all right? So I asked around and I said, how's everyone else doing it? And come to find out, um, seriously, come to find out, all their top streamers got whatever they wanted. If they wanted to stream at 6,000, 8,000, they could stream at whatever they wanted with no limitations. How do you know? All you had to do was look at the source code of their page, and it says right on it the quality they're streaming at. So Twitch had absolutely no defense against this. They would, they came to my stream, oh, lower your bitrate. What about everyone else out there who has a higher bitrate? We don't care. Lower your bitrate. Oh, so you're personally targeting me because you're an unfair website. I see. Goodbye. And that's exactly what happened. I left. The moment this happened... I was out the door, and I went to YouTube. Unwilling to accept the drop in quality, he began streaming on YouTube instead, who had launched their streaming platform, but received far fewer views, again decreasing his income True. while he was still in debt for the condominium. For, on for many different reasons, because YouTube, number one, has no discoverability for streaming. Number two, the stream chat's absolutely terrible. I didn't even use the YouTube stream chat. I made my own client. An IRC client similar to what people had on Twitch, we made ourselves, and I had it at that point in my own website. You would go to my website, watch my embedded stream, and then use my own stream chat to talk because it was such a nightmare trying to use the YouTube chat at that time. Um, and that was a lot of hoops to jump through to try to stream on somewhere other than Twitch, and it wasn't profitable because there was no memberships, no super chats, no super stickers. None of that existed at that time. It was just ad revenue. So for me, the live streaming aspect of it was essentially just fan service. And that's what I called it. I said, you want to be there live? You can be. Please consider contributing in another way because I'm getting nothing from the live streams, which we're about to talk about now. This is one of the other ways that you could have contributed. January 10th, 2015, prospects were looking better for Philip when he created a Patreon page for himself. In the first month, he made over $1,300 from 134 patrons, good fan art. helping to shore up his lost income. But this upturn in Philip's fortunes would not last. On June 24th, five months after oh the launch God. of his Patreon, Philip was swatted while he was streaming. The term swatted refers to the questionable online practice that had been increasing in popularity during that time period. It involves a person calling in an anonymous tip to the police in the area that there is some serious situation at a streamer's location, such as a hostage, thus instigating a response from a SWAT team who would go to the person's house or apartment. And by the way, no, it looked nothing like any of these pictures. When they showed up, here's the thing. I was smart. As soon as I moved out here, all right, I put in a phone call to the local police department within a week of me living here. And I said, hey, guys, just so you know, I want to let you know I just moved here. Here I am. I'll give you my YouTube channel. You can check it out. I live stream every day. And sadly, we're hearing more and more cases of people who are getting swatted. I'm afraid it might happen to me. So all I'm doing is I'm putting in the word that I'm here. And if you ever get a call at this house or from this house or claiming to be from this house stating that something's happening, it's likely false. And you got to be, you know, definitely judge it with a grain of salt. Don't come in here guns blazing because people have done it before this swatting and they're likely going to do it again. So I gave them the heads up. And when they showed up, oh, they showed up in full force. Don't get me wrong. There was like a van, a bunch of cop cars. They came out with their vests, but that was it. It was their vests. They weren't in full body gear with a giant fucking wall ram like that. They didn't come out with the fucking dogs and shit. It was a few cars and a van, and they had to drive up. They walked right outside the stream or the street, and they they with a, with a bullhorn. They said, "Philip Burnell, attention, or anyone else in the house, come out with your hands up." And they just kept saying it repeatedly over and over. I didn't hear it because I had my headphones on, but my ex did. We said, oh, shit, it's happening. We announced to the stream. Back then, I didn't have a face cam. So I just announced to the stream, okay, it's happening. And I put all my shit down. And uh, we went outside with our hands up. 
And I walked right up to the guy who was the sergeant who I talked to on the phone. And he says, are you Mr. Burnell? I said, yes, and you're Sergeant so-and-so who I talked to. This is exactly what I was afraid of. And he says, thank you so much for calling us and telling us. We do, by law, have to check your house quickly to make sure there's really no threat in there. And then we'll just be on our way. And that's exactly what happened. They went in, check, check, check. He said, okay, so it's a prank. I said, absolutely, it's got to be a prank. My stream is live right now. I said, okay, bye. And that was the end of it. Thank God, because someone could have died. Someone could have literally fucking died if that hadn't happened that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, How messed up? How messed up that someone would do that to anyone? And it's happened, I mean, we saw it in the Wings of Redemption video. It's You're trying to kill the person, essentially. It's not funny, it's not a joke. You're trying to murder that person. That's attempted murder, in my opinion, okay? So anyway, I'm not sure exactly how this is going to outline it, but just so everyone knows... Essentially, when that happened, and I've never talked about this publicly before. You know what? Hold on. Let's play the rest of this, and let's see where it goes, and then I'm going to tell you something. The intention is to force the SWAT team to storm the living space, potentially injuring or arresting the streamer inside while the stream is running. This particular incident ended quickly and peacefully, however, with the officers bantering to each other that the incident was, quote, gamer shit. But it was only the beginning in an uptick of negative behavior targeting right. Philip. On June 26th, the next just thing. two days after the swatting attack, Philip's stream was struck again, this time with a dedicated denial of service attack, better known as a DDoS. The function of such an- The funny part about all this, if you look at the videos on the right, look at this. DSP gets DDoSed and swatted, blames the internet for why he could have almost died. Blames the internet. Well, who should I blame? Who else called the fucking- Like, what? Of course! Almighty Tevin, you fucking genius moron! Oh, who do you think I would blame? I didn't call it on myself. Someone tried to fucking hurt me. Who else do you fucking blame, right? And you gotta emphasize, I could have died. This is terrible. Don't think it's a joke. Don't do this shit, right? Why would you make a video acting like that's bad to say that that's bad? Like, what is wrong with you? You're a fucking idiot clickbait piece of shit. Oh, I gotta fucking make a video about it. Make fun of Phil because he got swatted. He said it's the internet's fault. No shit, it's the internet's fault. Oh my god, he's so stupid. An attack is to overwhelm a person's internet modem, temporarily shutting off internet access. But the largest blow by far was against his videos in general. A small number of people began flagging some of Philip's yep. videos, claiming that the fan art in the videos was utilized without the permission of the artist. If he were to receive a third strike on either account, the respective account would be taken offline temporarily. So... To give you, to tell you how elaborately fucked up this situation is, because some of you may not even know about this situation, okay? Within a three to four month period, I was swatted, I was repeatedly had the denial of service, had to get my whole IP address and modem and all my equipment changed out to fix that issue. It's not a simple fix with my ISP. I know it sounds stupid, but it just is. It was complex. And then... I had a calculated long-term plan attack launched against me and my business. Here's what happened. A group of people, two or three of them, were giving me fan art under the guise of being fans, okay? And saying, hey, Phil, use this fan art on your streams. I still use fan art on my streams to this day, okay? I did. I used the fan art on my pre-streams. I never really used fan art in any of my gameplay videos or vlogs. It was primarily and almost always exclusively used on my pre-streams, which is a segment of time before I would turn on my, my gameplay. I would talk with my audience, go through some news, or tell them what was going on with my schedule. We would shoot the shit. There would be some ads running. And then I would start gameplay, okay? So I had one of these for every day. Every day I ran a pre-stream that I streamed, and I streamed six days a week. So just add that up. Every day, six days a week, after a few months, there's dozens, 50, 100 of these videos all accumulated. And this was over a course of about a six to eight month period that these people have been giving me fan art to use on my streams. Okay? All of a sudden, after having been swatted, after having had a repeat DDoS attacks, like that's not enough. These people thought, oh, this is funny. They thought it was funny, the things that were happening to me. So they decided, oh God, now what happened? I went to a different video because my controller fell off. <laughs> Temporarily yeah, good. shutting off internet access. But the largest... Okay, good. Blow by far we went right back to where we were. Videos in okay. So, after all that shit happening to me, they decide to do this now. When I'm already trying to recover from all these other horrible things, I mean, psychologically, you could imagine the stress on, on everyone around here, right? 
They then decide they're, they're going to get me false copyright strikes for all of the fan art. Do the math there. One pre-stream a day for months on end, it was like a hundred or more copyright strikes. Okay? They tried to mass submit them, but YouTube's system, thankfully, is so shitty that when they tried to mass submit them, YouTube rejected a bunch of them and only accepted two of them. All right? But it accepted them as group submissions. Like, one of them was, like, for 12 to 15 videos in one strike, and another one was, like, another 20 videos in another strike. If the third strike hit my channel, my channel would have been shut down, and I would have not been able to make any money. That would have been the end of my business for weeks, okay? So, at that time, I was working with Machinima. They were my partnered network, and Machinima had a call with YouTube, all right? And we had a little powwow together going back and forth about what to do. YouTube instructed Machinima, get this, Phil should delete all of his videos that may have fan art in them. Now, this was 2015. DSP Gaming had been around for 20 since 2010. They expected me to go back and look at five years of videos and delete every fucking video that had a piece of fan art in it. That was the instructions that YouTube gave my partner network. How am I supposed to do that? You tell me. Now, when I asked my partner network to inquire why YouTube wouldn't do anything, their response was pretty funny. Their system is automated and they have no control over it. That basically, if the, if the strikes were already in the pipeline to be reviewed and they were matched and seen as legitimate by the automated system, they had no power whatsoever to stop it. Even knowing that they were false, because I had evidence that they were false. These were people who had given me the fan art. I had the original emails and forum posts proving they had given me outright, you know, rights to use that fan art. YouTube is so dumb, they had no way to stop the false strikes. And so they said, if he wants to stop his channel from getting shut down, he has to delete everything. So I spent an entire day, 24 hours deleting every pre-stream podcast. Okay, back then it wasn't called the pre-stream podcast. They were just called pre-streams. Deleting every video that I believed had fan art in it, okay? By the time I was done, DSP Gaming showed as a net loss of like three to four million views that month because all those video views that had counted were deleted from the channel. And this had an insanely bad impact on the channel, He's actually about to go into it, so I'm going to roll, and then I'm going to actually tell you something else about this whole situation of all this stuff going on. Let's go. Play. General, a small go. number of people began flagging some of Philip's videos, claiming that the fan art in the videos was utilized without the permission of the artist. If he were to receive a third strike on either account, the respective account would be taken offline temporarily, cutting yep. him off from one of his few precious sources of revenue. At the recommendation of Machinima, Philip set all of his videos that used fan art as private, thus- Wrong. It wasn't the recommendation of Machinima, and it weren't set to private. It was the actual recommendation of YouTube themselves, and it was delete your video. If they were set to private, that would have been fine. But here's what happened. I set a video to private. This was the second video that got hit with a copyright strike, and it still got hit with the strike. So even setting the videos to private, they were still susceptible to strikes if the strikes were already in the pipeline. I had to delete the videos entirely to make them ineligible for a copyright strike. So this is actually wrong on two fronts. It was YouTube saying to do it, and I was told to delete the videos outright, which is what hurt my channel. Removing them from public accessibility, but this action had an unintended consequence. YouTube's search algorithms considered the views on these videos to be lost. Socialblade.com's public graphs show that, this. according to YouTube's algorithms, Philip Net lost 1.37 million views on his channel in August of 2015 when he set these videos to private. In doing so, his video... Essentially, it said, that month I made no views. Like, I had negative views that month. How is that possible? Right? Because I deleted so many videos, it, it, the aggregate views said more loss than gained, and it d destroyed my channel. I, I was completely removed from YouTube's search algorithm. After having been in YouTube search for so many years, known as a longtime content creator, a trusted content creator for gaming, I couldn't get any views because no one would show up. I would not show up in any search or related videos ever, ever again.
videos were deprioritized by YouTube's search and recommendation functions, further reducing the visibility of his channel. Between July and September of 2015, Philip lost approximately 500,000 monthly views, a month. which constituted 15% of his remaining viewership. And it just got worse and worse every month. Already dwindling revenue. Right. Machinima, facing trouble after a number of publicized scandals and seeing Philip's viewership loss, renegotiated his contract again to pay him even less. To shore up his income, he announced yet another channel, this one called KO Gaming, which he launched on January 14th, 2016. This channel was created to be a repository for edited content, something Philip had refrained from doing during most of his career on YouTube. These videos received mixed viewership. Some performed well, while others failed to break 10,000 views even a year later. See, I don't like how he says this, I'll be honest. He makes it seem like the channel's a big failure. The channel was a humongous success. Humongous success. I had a video with over a million views. Regularly, I had videos there anywhere from 10,000 to 50,000 views. I had several videos, 100,000 views or more. The channel was very profitable. I made thousands of dollars on that channel. Absolutely, I did. But YouTube fucked me. And I don't know if he actually says in this video how they did. Let's see if he does, and if not, I have to tell you what happened, because I don't remember if he goes into that or not. So yeah, he really downplays the success of this channel. It did really well in the scheme of a brand new YouTube channel with no frame of reference, just coming out of nowhere. The fact that I had a million view video in the first year is tremendous, actually. Philip began showing strange patterns in his Patreon rewards during Oh, okay, he already, he already skipped it. So what ended up happening, why I don't have KO Gaming anymore. I mean, it exists, but I don't use it. YouTube had a weird thing that they did in late 2016, early 2017. They started running yet another algorithm that would auto-detect certain videos and flag them as unfit for advertising. For some odd reason, they flagged my entire channel, on uh, the whole KO Gaming channel, as unfit for advertising. I wasn't able to monetize the videos. So why am I going to continue to make edited, high-level, high tons-of-work edited content if I can't make any money on it? I'm an idiot, right? Then I should do stuff I can make money on. KO game, or excuse me, DSP gaming was still monetized. And there's still no explanation to this day as to why this happened. After a while, this it appears that KO gaming got whitelisted again, and now I can get ads on it again. But it just makes no sense that they did it when they did. I was full-fledged going to continue to balance my content where it was going to be some edited, some live stream, and they completely destroyed my efforts of doing that. A channel that was incredibly successful was murdered overnight by YouTube's new algorithm for demonetization. Pretty fucking messed up, isn't it? And by the way, some people are asking me, what does KO Gaming uh, stand for? Well, King of Gaming, Knockout Gaming... Kit Kat Oreos Gaming? I have an answer for you. You ready? I don't know. I never figured it out. I was eventually going to settle on something, but it was always kind of an ongoing air of mystery, kind of a running thread that people wondered, gee, what does KO Gaming stand for? And I never said, you know what? Why determine that? Why not keep people guessing? And then eventually, maybe one day, right, I'll actually announce the answer if there ever I want to, but I never really had an answer for that at all like it was just kind of oh well it's just it just is ko gaming and people liked it so why was i going to change it or ever change that right okay all right let's continue 2015 as well most notably he had asked for a significant amount of money to produce a reboot of an old cheaply Wrong. produced show he wasn't had significant with amount some of money we'll talk about, about four it. years prior called project seven However, after collecting the money, he stated that he would have to postpone the filming of the show indefinitely to concentrate on his regular content. Okay. Not what happened. Okay? Here's what happened. In 2015, I absolutely needed to supplement my income with Patreon. I had to. And by the way, I used to call it Patreon. Now I know it's Patreon. Um, I just couldn't make enough money on YouTube anymore to make ends meet because of all these things that had happened all these trolling activities, okay? They really hurt me badly. People just don't understand how badly that hurt. Um, and so I struggled because when I started using Patreon, everyone said, oh, you can't just use Patreon. You've got to have goals. you got to have this goal and that goal and this goal and that goal. I'm like, but wait a minute. I stream six days a week full time. In fact, at that point, I even think I was streaming seven days a week, I think, okay? What exactly do you expect me to do extra on top of that right so that i can have goals on patreon like the things that were asked of me were so ridiculous 
at that time, especially when people knew I was hurting financially because of all the trolling shit that had happened against me. So one of one month, one of the goals, which was a tiered goal, this was not a set goal, it was a tiered goal, was that I was going to attempt to at least make a, 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 an attempt at a reboot of Project 7. Project 7 was a campy show that originally I had started myself back in 2010. I had then made another version of it in 2011, 2012 with my friends at the time. And I was going to reboot that, not as the reboot show, but a reboot of the original show. I know that sounds really confusing. The premise was that I was supposed to be stuck around playing a shitty game that I didn't want to play. And it was going to be like a, 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 an antagonist. His name was Deathface. And he was going to be taunting me with jokes, making fun of me, and doing messed up things to me while I tried to play the game. And it was going to be both gameplay, raw gameplay, but edited in with skits and things like that. That's what the premise of the original show was. Okay? So... One month, I made an incremental goal on Patreon that if we reached this amount of funding, I would attempt to at least stage some kind of a reboot of Project 7, starting with the trailer and then eventually, likely, if it was successful, rolling out waves of content. There was no promise on a timeline. It was just, I would do it, okay? Well, here's what ended up happening. First of all, to clarify everything, it was a tiered reward system. It was not, oh, if Phil raises $1,000 on Patreon, $1,000 goes to Project 7. That's not what it was. It was like, oh, raise two fifty, you guys get one reward. Raise 500 this month, you get another reward. Raise seven fifty, you get another reward. And if you happen to raise 1000 the tier goal is that. It's like, kind of like when I put on my vest, it's not $150 for the vest. It's that we already got the glasses, we already got the hat, now you complete the ensemble with the vest. It's a tiered reward system. You understand that, right? Everyone gets that. Today you get that. But back then people wanted to be assholes. And of course they wanted to spin everything in a way that was completely untrue. So they were saying, oh, you see what Phil did? He had a high ass tiered goal. Or not tiered, they didn't even say that. Forget the tier system. Act like it doesn't exist. Phil had a high goal on Patreon of like $750 or $1,000. He pocketed the money, kept it, and never did anything with it because he never made Project 7. Okay which is not how it works. That's not how tiered rewards work at all, but this is how people wanted to spin it. They wanted to spin it so simplistically to make me look like a villain, all right? So now here's what really happened in that situation. And I will again admit fault. At this point in my life, I was struggling a lot. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I had no idea if I was gonna be able to keep doing YouTube for a living because of all the bad things that were happening to me. I mean, the swatting, the DDoS, the false copyright strikes, the loss of revenue, everyone making fun of me on the internet with this is how you don't play. It was like thing after thing after thing after thing. And quite frankly, I was feeling lost. I was feeling like burnout. I was feeling depressed. I didn't know what to do because I didn't know if I was going to be able to keep doing what I loved. And I knew viably I couldn't get another job. If I were to go out there and start in the job market, I hadn't worked for over five years. How in the holy hell... Am I going to get a job out there that pays anything comparatively to what I'm making on YouTube? I'm not. I would end up getting a job that paid so little, I would actually lose money quitting YouTube. You see? So I had to stick with it. One of the things people urged me to do was have a Patreon. Everyone's doing it. Everyone has this. You should do it. So I did it, but I was very much struggling to find ways to reward people. Just like today, right now with my members' goals, I struggle. What can I realistically do for a member's goal for you guys when I'm already here six days a week full time and I don't have free time to do other special stuff, right? It's a struggle. I don't know what to do. So that being said, um, I was trying to figure out these goals every month and it was very hard to figure out what to do every month. And someone had suggested, why not try to reboot Project 7? Not with a high expectation of greatness, not even anything that was going to guarantee a series, but at least just give it a shot. To which I said, all right, you know what? I just need another tiered goal. I'll throw it in there. I did. I shouldn't have. This is my mistake. I over-promised and under-delivered. I over-committed to something that eventually I realized there was no way I could live up to this expectation at all. Okay? So here's what happened. We did hit the goal that month. Okay? When it was time for me to start taking time away from my streams, I announced it to everyone. I said, guys, this coming week, I'm going to have to stop streaming. I'm going to have to have not at least either night streams or entire streams where I'm not streaming. And this is going to reduce the amount of gameplay we do and the amount of fun that we have together because I'm going to have to work on Project 7. The feedback I got at that time directly from my viewer base was, no, don't do it. Forget it. Forget about that thing. We, we really don't want it. You know, we don't understand why you even put it as a goal. It's not a big deal. We're not really into it. Now, admittedly, there were people who were into it who had pledged to my Patreon for it, right? 
they weren't the same people who were talking to me on my streams. But I saw those people on my streams as my direct customer base. The people who were giving me support every day. The people who, oh, by the way, Deathface had done a, 50, a $10 tip and said, did someone call me? I didn't even call it out. I just added it to the total. My bad, Deathface. Thank you, Deathface, for a $10 tip. Okay, anyway. So, yeah, I basically was listening directly to the people who I saw every day and not to the people who were financing my Patreon, okay? So, what happened? The detractors jumped on it. Wait a minute. Phil's not making Project 7 again? Oh, how disingenuous. What a liar. What a scam artist. And I'm not kidding you. People started saying things like Phil pocketed $1,000 and didn't make Project 7, despite the fact the first other tiered rewards were given out. In reality, with a tiered reward system, you're only talking the next tier. So even if what they're saying is true, it was $250, not 1000 But already, let's multiply it by four, because who cares? When you're hating on Dark Side Phil, it doesn't matter if you're truthful or you just exponentially, you know, make the situation worse. It's fine as long as you get to shit on Phil. That's just how the meme became on the, on the internet. As long as you're hating on Phil, it doesn't matter if it's truthful or how truthful, as long as you're making him look bad, okay? So that was number one. Number two... My direct viewer base told me not to do it, so I didn't do it, all right? Out of all the people who pledged to my Patreon that week, that month, all right, I received two complaints. One person was kind of pissed but said, you know what? In perspective of things, I understand. No big deal. One person was genuinely angry with me, and we actually had a lengthy private conversation. I apologized profusely. I told them how it was my fault. I should not have promised it. I'm sorry that it didn't happen. That person left my community for several years. They did eventually come back, but they left for several years very angry that they had pledged directly to see Project 7 return, and it never did, okay? So I did have a consequence. I had a fan who was a longtime fan who left the community entirely for a long time, all right? But what do the haters and detractors say? Phil's a scam artist. Phil pocketed the money. What about all the people who pledged to see Project 7? Did he ever refund the money? No, he stole their money. These people are so dumb, they don't even understand you can't refund money like that on Patreon. How do you know when someone pledged to my Patreon for that month that they pledged for Project 7? It's not like, click here to pledge directly for Project 7. That doesn't exist. It's just pledge to Patreon. That's it. There's no way for me to know who directly pledged and who didn't. It's impossible. There's no way to refund someone for that. It's illogical. It's stupid to suggest it. But these people were just basically making unrealistic demands because they knew I couldn't fulfill them to then say, ha, see, Phil didn't do the right thing. He's a scumbag. And that's how they spun this. They essentially said this big thing was a ginormous explosion of drama and Phil's a dishonest scam artist when in reality, it wasn't a big deal at all. And after that, I learned my lesson and I didn't overpromise and underdeliver on my Patreon goals anymore. Basically, they just kind of got way more realistic and honestly, way more bland because I knew I couldn't commit to doing a lot of the stuff that a lot of people wanted to see me do because I was already having to work so much just to make ends meet that I couldn't have extra time to do extra projects and things. Shout out to Phil Smokes Crack who just tipped $20, said, You're real to me, brother. You give me hope. Because you're not perfect, but you're not as bad as people say. Well, thank you very much, Phil Smokes Crack. I don't think I've ever believed in my head that I was perfect nor said it without, you know, joking in mind. And I definitely appreciate the kind words and the support. Guys, we're almost done. You ready for the finale? Let's do this. Here we go. He also made promises for other videos with high monetary goals on Patreon. For example, his patrons voted for him to make a best and worst moments montage of his playthrough of Alan Wake, which was to be released that September. However, after the first part received weak viewership, he decided against fulfilling that obligation. He Again, this is this happened right at the same time as Project 7, by the way. Project 7 was like a month before, and then there was this. It like happened boom, 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 everything at once. Correct. My patron said, let's vote on a project for Phil to do for a Patreon reward, and it was the best and worst of Alan Wake. I made part one, and the views were terrible. And the feedback I received was, eh, you know, we thought this was going to be better, but you know what? Maybe we got rose-colored glasses on. Maybe we we're not remembering the game exactly how it was. Maybe we think it's better than it really was, because honestly, even your funny moments highlight wasn't that great. So instead of that, do something else. So I did. I did other projects and other vi streams and things. Here we go with the detractors again. Oh, but Phil scammed them again. Another month where he didn't do his goal. It's like, but wait, my viewers told me not to do it. 
they said, please do something else. This is boring. It's good that you tried it, but why continue with a series that we're not liking? That was the direct feedback I received. So why would I go against the desires of my own viewership? The truth of the matter is I have hate viewers. These are people who watch everything I do just to shit on me. So they were watching all these things happening and then creating videos and controversial topics about it on their own channels and streams saying that I was a scammer and everything. In reality, my viewership did not care. My fans who were supporting me never cared because why would they continue to support me if that was the case? They would have left. But the haters just kept making worse and worse with the crap they would extrapolate and the shit that they would make up. It wasn't true. No one cared that Alan Wake Part 2 was never released. They wanted other content, and they got other content. It wasn't like I said, oh, I took all of your, your income, all, all this Patreon pledge, and I just canceled streams for a week and went on a vacation with the money. I continued to work every single day. But that's not what you'll hear from my detractors. Okay. I missed Super Chats? Oh, my bad. <clears throat> so... 672 to the Super Chats. I think you mentioned details about the DDoS. I think you forgot to mention after he talked about it. Oh, okay. So basically, I, I can answer. We will. Dan the Man also re-upped his membership for four months. All right? So all along this time period, that one year of 2015 where all that shit was going wrong and now people were constantly attacking me, calling me a scammer, calling me a hypocrite and all of that, that's where my personal life fell apart. This is what I actually wanted to say is that this was the moment, or not the, mo the moment, but the series of events that happened starting with the swatting, then the DDoS attacks I couldn't constantly stream like I needed to, then the copyright strikes that destroyed my channel, now I've got less views, less revenue, trying to do stuff with an edited channel, but people constantly telling me that I'm a scam artist and shit, and just so much negativity about me on the internet, that's when my personal life started to fall apart, meaning any kind of semblance of a, of a nice family life, a home life, it was, it was just gone, all right? It was just constant stress, it was constant worrying about money. How am I going to make ends meet? How are we going to pay for the bills? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? Um, my ex got a job and started working. And essentially, we lived two separate lives at that point. And no one knows this. Okay? But yeah, it was basically, yeah, we lived in the same house. But we basically didn't really do much together. Our one day off a week was go out and go grocery shopping and get a meal and come back and nothing. No, no shared interests. Like nothing. We basically started living two separate lives. And it was kind of like a lie. Living together, pretending like you're 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 a couple involved, and we just weren't. At that point, we were completely disconnected from each other. She went off and had her own life, made her own friends, did her own thing outside of the house. And I basically was here, stuck every day on stream, and this was my life, you know? That was it. And it was bad. It was it was very, very bad. It led to the next topic he's gonna get to. All right, it's directly one of the reasons why it happened. Um, and this was, at this point, probably the second lowest I've been in my life. Because the absolute lowest was earlier before I was a YouTuber. And I, I actually was to the point where I was so depressed that at one point I was suicidal. And that, thank God, I've never gotten back there in my life ever. Thank God. It could be a topic for another day. But in this case, this time of my life when all this bad stuff was going on, and essentially my personal life was non-existent anymore, um... This was the second lowest point of my life where I was lost. I didn't feel like I had a future as a content creator. I didn't even like making content for YouTube anymore. I had actually lost my passion for it because I felt like no matter what, people were still going to hate me. Like there was never going to be a way to have people like me again because so much na nasty toxicity was allowed to be said about me on YouTube that I felt like this was the end of everything. And honestly, I was basically living... Like they say, living on a prayer or shooting from the hip or whatever you want to say, I had no clue what was going to happen the next day. Every day was a, no, a new what fucked up thing is going to happen to me next. That was my attitude at this point. Um, you know? So let's continue because this is, we're now 2015 into 2016, KO Gaming, and now let's see what happens next. Also made a goal for four extra Minecraft sessions. Here's another he neglected thing. that obligation as well, only playing one more session for similar reasons of low viewership. Actually, not true. It was because there was technical problems. The first two streams that I did, you can even see it right there. I couldn't figure out how to get Minecraft to work on my PC properly. And by that, at that time, there was no pure, pure console version to play yet that worked. So it was shit. It was terrible quality. And people were angry with me that the quality was so bad. And they were like, go to my world, go to my world, go to my world. And it was like, so let me get this straight. The visual quality shit, right? We There's really no goal. Like, I liked it. I liked Minecraft. 
but it just was not a good project. It was a project that wasn't going anywhere. And it felt like if I continued to play after two or three sessions, I would have nothing to do. So I played two or three sessions and then I let it go. And people were upset with me. Again, who was really upset? A couple people who wanted me to visit their Minecraft world, like three people, and detractors. That's all who was upset. People continued to pledge to my Patreon, continued to support my content. If they thought it was a big deal, they wouldn't have done so. Okay. Though these failures attracted considerable negative attention, this was nothing compared to what was about to occur. Here we go. Here it comes. The big one. On May 1st, 2016, while preparing for a live stream, Philip accidentally streamed himself masturbating. Though the video itself wasn't graphic as it only captured his chest and face, what he was doing was clear. At first, he attempted to cover it up, banning people who mentioned the incident from his channel, but the word spread quickly, even earning himself a spot on Keemstar's show, Drama Alert. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, all right, you ready for this? Because this is going to be a bombshell. This revelation, all right, is going to rock the internet. What I'm about to tell you has never at all been revealed, but it is the truth of the matter that none of you expected me to reveal today. All right? You ready for this? I hope you're ready. I'm surprised. We don't have enough people on the stream for me to reveal this right now. We should have had 1,000. We only have about 700. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> so, are you ready for this? The revelation you've all been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen. I staged the whole thing. Bullshit. I was wanking my crank. I was pulling my putt. I was spanking the monkey. I pulled out the trouser snake for a walk. I was absolutely doing that on the stream. Absolutely, freaking lootly I got caught. <laughs> okay. Are you crazy? But what's hilarious about the whole situation is some assholes actually had the audacity to actually make up a conspiracy theory stating that I made the whole thing up and it was staged. They actually, to this day, believe that. They believe that I made it up. Like, yes, it was my master plan that this would be on the internet. abso freaking lootly right? Some people just cannot be fucking helped. Okay? Thank you to the UPS guy for a $2 tip. He says, I love you, DSP. Don't be depressed or down again. And Shadow Boss at a $5 tip. He says, we got your back, brother. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, guys. I also got a $5 anonymous tip saying, we love you. Are we going to do the, the custom fandom matches tonight? That's tonight. We're doing it after we finish this. Okay? It's happening. It's still happening. All right? So we're now at 283 and climbing. Thank you guys for the support today. All right. But to give further elaboration to the situation, not that it needs that much, um, as I told you, my personal life fell apart. And there was literally no relationship at all behind the scenes here. It was like two separate people living separate lives. And... I was very depressed and doing very stupid, dumb things. And that was just one of many that you, you guys are aware of. But that was the worst, obviously. Um, and it was an insanely stupid decision. Insanely stupid, just in general. Why would I be doing it in here? But again, you know, having a separate life. It's kind of like, oh, I'm in here. This is my domain. This is my room. I'm separated from anything else in the outside world when I'm in here. And you know what I'm saying? Like... It was fucked up. It was really, 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 really fucked up. Let's just put it that way, okay? It was not normal. It was not any kind of logic involved at all. It was just I was messed up in the head, all right? That's really the only uh, explanation I have for it, all right? There's really no justification for it. There's no, oh, let's, let's apologize. I mean, yeah, I apologize. Thank God it wasn't worse, right? Thank God. And by the way, so many people have over-exaggerated and extrapolated upon this over the years. First of all, 
It happened on YouTube, not on Twitch. Some people say it happened on Twitch. Wrong. It happened on YouTube. Some people claim I did it in front of thousands of children. Wrong. I did it on a pre-stream and not a pre-stream podcast. Back then, a pre-stream was just me running music and it slides. Um, actually, it wasn't even music. It was the PlayStation dashboard theme and slides until I came and talked for a little... Oh, until I came. Until I uh, started talking on stream. <laughs> Bad choice of words. Until I started talking on stream about the daily stuff that was happening, like the schedule or games. Were, it's kind of hot in here right now. I don't know what's going on. It's like the temperature just went up 20 degrees or something. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, um, it was only, I'm not even exaggerating, probably 20, 30 people who were on the stream at the time, and no one was paying attention to the stream because it was just slides running. And then all of a sudden, the camera was still on, and I sit down, and everyone's making jokes about, oh, look, Phil's on camera, he doesn't realize it, and then they saw something stupid, right? It was my dumbass O face, which is really dumb, because when you think about it, how many people have made that face on camera over the years that's way worse than me? There's people uh, fucking a pie, an American pie, you know what I mean? Like, it's ridiculously stupid, it's not a big deal, and honestly, it's not a big deal. But initially, of course, I panicked. Duh. How else would I respond? So, of course, at first, it was like, oh, anyone going to talk about that? Ban them on from the channel. Bam, bam, bam. And then after about an hour of streaming, I went on break, and I started checking my messages. And actually, I, you know, this person knows who they are. No one will ever know who this person is. But this person knows who they are. They were a fan of mine, longtime viewer. And they had actually messaged me, and they said, listen, here's the deal. Something really stupid just happened, okay? We all saw it. Now we're really seeing it because, of course, people ripped your stream and it's being rebroadcast all over the internet as we speak so here's what you can do you have two options right you can either completely ignore and deny it and act like it never happened in which case you will never live this down and for years people will always use it to hound you or you can laugh along with it admit that it was a mistake and just move on and the, the bottom line is you didn't show anything besides a silly face there was no sound no you know what i mean there was nothing obscene you're not going to get banned from anywhere for it because it was just a stupid mistake and people should rightly forgive you for that and that person was 100 percent absolutely positively correct and to you you know who you are out there thank you for some of the best advice i've ever received in my life because that was really the best thing to do i really do feel that if i had not approached it that way that might have been the end of everything for me i might have just been an endless laughing stock and no one would ever watch my content ever again but because I made a joke out of it. I took my avatar on Twitter and made it the meme about Prince Adam from He-Man with his old face. Oh, oh. And I did all these jokes constantly about it. And we just made fun of it constantly. And I rolled with it. I completely rolled with it. I even responded to Keemstar about it. Ha, ha, ha. Your show's funny. It's not. Your show sucks. But I just wanted to roll with it so he wouldn't make a big deal out of it. Thank you to Pro Agent for $1.50 tips saying, what were you watching? And elaborate took four dollars twenty cents and says what were you watching well that i can finally answer you ready i'm gonna tell you for some reason this is not moving anymore why did this stop moving the heck what hold on a second i'm not having the impact i want because it's not moving it's like it glitches or something i get oh well all right ready I will reveal to you now what I was... Wa this is not working. All right, forget it. Forget the effect. Ready? I was watching... Clowns. Fully clothed from head to toe. Full face paint. Big red rubber noses. And they were just bumping each other's butts together. Like this. I don't know what I was watching. I don't care. I don't... When you're... When you're so stupidly low right? That you're doing this in your place of business, right? You're not thinking logically. You're, it's like I've said over the years, well, here's what actually happened. I set up the, all these aromatherapy candles around my office and I took off my shirt and I started rubbing these oh, aromatic salves on my chest hair. Oh, I was so excited for this. It was such a really big planned out event that I did. And, you know, it was, and then I said, whoopee, when I was done. No, it was just something stupid and quick and dumb. It was... <laughs> What do you think? You think I, it's like, it's not anything momentous. I really don't remember. I don't care. I don't care what the hell it was. It was the dumbest question ever. Like, it was some kind of a memorable thing for me. No, the memory came after when I was embarrassed. Okay, then. So, anyway. <laughs> I think we've got 
the most embarrassing thing in my history out of the way. And now we can move on. We're almost done. Let's continue. This public attention actually increased his viewership for it a did. short time. For and a short so time. he changed his tactic, even retweeting some of the images made to joke about the incident. Right. Machinima still attempted to control the spread of information by copyright claiming any videos with the footage of Philip's mistake. And I will say that. I had nothing to do with me, and Machinima absolutely never asked me to do that. Machinima contacted me the day after and said, are you okay? How's everything going with this? Because we know what happened. And I said, because I attempted or I tackled it this way and I made fun of it, just like everyone else, it seems like things are going to be okay. To which they were like, okay, just let us know if you need anything. And that was it. All of a sudden, people started contacting me saying, did you know that the videos are getting taken down everywhere? I was like, no, I'm not doing it. And then people were saying, yeah, it's saying Machinima's doing it. Machinima, again, I could do an entire video like this on my experiences with Machinima because that company was so fucked up and ass backwards in the way that they handled stuff. They were like the ultimate bipolar disorder. One moment, they're helping you with everything. Another moment, they're your worst enemy. Or sometimes, they want everything to do with you. They want to be a part of you and your content. Another time, just don't talk to us ever. I, it made no sense that they did that. I didn't ask for it. They never asked me for permission. They just did it anyway. It was pretty fucked up. Yeah. Um, lies to me, $4.20 says, you were watching, this is how you don't play Middle Gear Solid, obviously. Well, that is correct, actually. As you guys know, I really enjoy those videos. I get off to them all the time. All right, let's keep going because there's a few more things before the video ends and we only have a couple minutes left. These extra views, however, would soon peter out. And with a stagnant subscriber count, the gradual decrease in viewers continued throughout the rest of the year. To help salvage his income, he began streaming on Twitch again on November 29th, 2016. Philip began expressing his concerns for his finances more and more in his blogs, imploring his viewers to watch more of his videos and to subscribe to his Patreon page. In one blog, mm -hmm. he blamed his lack of viewers on the new game releases and the fact that he claimed he was playing well instead of getting frustrated and angry. Because I was playing Neo, and in Neo, I was doing really well. I, unlike Dark Souls, where the controls are very delayed, in Neo, the controls were very responsive. And I was actually, at one point, steamrolling the first Neo game. Like, I was beating every boss on the first shot. I was dominating everything in the game. And people were like, this is a boring playthrough. And a playthrough that everyone thought was going to be popular ended up not being popular at all. It was weird because, again, at this point, I had a lot of hate watchers. The only reason they were around is to see me fail. And if I wasn't failing, they didn't want to be around anymore. In addition, this was the beginning of the end for YouTube. The signs were writing on the wall, as they say. The writing on the wall. That things were starting to fall apart at YouTube. That we there was strong rumors that... They were doing things badly and that the ad revenue was going to dry up at some point, although it wasn't clear if it was just a rumor or conspiracy theory or if it was really going to happen. And people actually had said to me, you got to go back to Twitch. If you really want to save your business, at this point, you can't have all your eggs in one basket. You've got to go back to Twitch because YouTube's about to fall apart. So I found out on Twitch, you could increase your bit rate now. This was many years later. I left in 2014. This was late 2016. So over two years later... They changed everything and said, oh, you can stream at a higher bit rate now and all these improvements like having things like uh, cheering implemented into your stream so people could contribute in various different ways. And people said Twitch was the right place to go. So I listened. I listened to the feedback of my viewership and I moved my business to Twitch and started focusing primarily on Twitch and basically didn't really care about YouTube anymore. Let's continue. Now, the flip side of that is I've actually been doing way better at Neo than I do at Dark Souls. So a lot of group of people who like to see me rage and fail haven't been around because they watched a couple streams. They're like, fuck, Phil's doing good. What the fuck is this? And they, they left and never came back. <clears throat> In addition... Thank you, Ponage101, you know, for a $10 tip. Awesome. Thank you, guys. At long last, on March 2nd of 2017, Machinima removed Philip from their managed partnership program. Since Philip's AdSense account was still banned, he had no way on his own to make money from any of his YouTube channels. And most of that is wrong. The, fun, the part that's correct is that Machinima removed me from their partner program, but that was because of me basically telling them to. All right? So here's what really happened. Here's the full story. So... At this time, the YouTube adpocalypse happened. This was early February of 2017. 
when the writing was on the wall that things were going to go wrong on YouTube, the conspiracy theories were proven true. And in early 2017, that February, half of the advertisers quit the site overnight. They cited many different reasons. For example, they said, oh, we found that our ads were being used on videos that have racist content, uh, very polarized political content. We saw a video that was basically a terrorist talking about killing people, and you had a Starbucks ad on it. So we're pulling all our advertisements from the site. Okay? That was number one. Number two, advertisers felt their ads were no longer effective on YouTube. Big companies like Walmart felt that they were throwing their ads to the wind and that YouTube's automated al algorithms were not putting the ads on appropriate videos and therefore people were just not seeing the ads that were appropriate and it was ineffective advertising. So that first week of um, February 2017, YouTube decided to pull half the ads. There was just no ads anymore. Overnight, someone like me, who my entire livelihood was made on ad revenue, my livelihood went down by 50%. Now, I already had all these compounding problems of the years before. The swatting, the DDoS, the false copyright strikes, being knocked out of the algorithm. This is how you don't play. All these things. And then this was the next thing. This was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Okay? When this happened, I contacted Machinima. And I said, listen, you guys are my source of income. Why is it saying I'm making half income right now? Machinima said, we don't know. We'll get back to you. I waited a day. I waited two days. I waited seven days. I got no response. I asked again, hey, what's going on? I need an answer. Oh, don't worry. We'll get back to you. I waited another week. So now two weeks of decreased revenue. I'm afraid I'm going to lose things. I might lose my house if I can't pay my mortgage, right? What's going on? So what did I do? I did something smart. I went and reached out to a contact of mine that I had at Machinima years prior, someone who previously was the head of the partnership program at Machinima, and I had been directly working with. He was a really nice guy and really helpful at the time. I send him an email, and the email gets bounced back saying, oh, he doesn't work here anymore. Great. They never told me that. But this will be forwarded to the appropriate party. Okay? So the next day, I get an email from Machinima stating, how dare you, Phil? All right? I'm not even kidding. How dare you contact someone else at the company we told you we're working on it it's not your right to go around us when we're already working on it you should just sit there and wait like a little child and we'll get back like daddy will get back to you someday on this you wait and you sit there in the corner right this is my livelihood this is my job i can't i'm gonna lose my everything if i can't pay my bills and they're not getting me information and they're not getting back to me then they give me an insulting response, okay? So I responded to them saying, I want an apology because you just insulted me. I have a, I'm an adult running my own business. I have a right to talk to whoever the fuck I want. And if you're going to tell me that I can't talk to someone at the company who I know and was friends with, then fuck you. I didn't say that in the email, but in other words, fuck you. I don't want to be with you anymore. So it's this simple. I want an apology or I want an answer or I want to sever my partnership with you. 24 hours later, they severed their partnership with me. So it was kind of mutual. I didn't want to be with a company that was going to disrespect me like that. Tell, talk down to me and say, who are you to ask for help? Because you're not giving me any. You're a bunch of idiots. So get you to answer me or stop blowing me off. And don't tell me what to do like I'm a child. All right? So that was the end of that. I didn't have a partnership anymore. Okay? However... What Mr. Nudson just said was incorrect. He just stated that since my AdSense account was still banned, I couldn't have ads on my videos anymore. That is completely wrong. Because one thing that was never addressed, and I never told anyone over the years, is that YouTube reinstated my, my uh, AdSense relatively quickly. It was in, two, uh, in about a year and a half, two years, after originally they suspended it way back when in 2010. Around 2012, it was back again. And I was able to use it fully. Why? Because YouTube granted everyone amnesty. They rebooted their program because actually it was found in a court of law that their original AdSense program was flawed. And a lot of people were suing YouTube for not getting paid and having all these issues. So YouTube had to redo their AdSense program from the ground up and made a whole new program and had relaunched it. When they relaunched it, everyone was granted the ability to have AdSense again. My AdSense account had been completely reinstated. And at any time from 2012 onward, 
I would have been able to run at my own ads on my YouTube videos again, including gameplay as well, because that was all allowed. However, I didn't want to do that because at the time I was with Machinima and Machinima gave me that managed partnership that protected me from the auto content ID claims, meaning there was no risk of me getting shit claimed from a third party. If I'm playing a game, I won't get claimed for the music or the intro cutscene. I'll be able to make money on all my gameplay videos, okay? So I always wanted to stay with a partner network because it meant I was going to be free from having those claim issues, all right? So at this point, when I lost, I say lost my partnership. Really, they just, I wanted to leave and they granted me my release essentially is what happened. Um, basically, I had options. I could either seek a new partner network or I could try to do my own. Now, I was deathly afraid because at the time... The rumor was that if you had your own AdSense, you had less money. Basically, the ads you got on your personal AdSense account were not equivalent to the ads that YouTube was giving to partner networks. So if I put my own AdSense account on my content, I would make way less money. As opposed to if I tried to jump to another partner network right away, I should make more money. So I can make less money or more money. I think it's kind of a no-brainer, right? So now we're going to talk about the next steps that happened here. Thank you, VAC29. For nine months of membership, there's too much misinformation out there. I'm glad that you cleared this up. Thank you, Vac. Let's continue. We're almost done. He began to panic. However, within the month, a company named Curse offered Philip another contract, and Philip's attitude immediately turned again, though some of his thoughts were mixed. On one hand, he was making more money than he had been with his Machinima contract. Because with Machinima, they were taking a certain like set percentage of the ad revenue, with Curse, they were actually taking less, if you can believe it. Um, a Machinima originally had been paying me that fat, flat rate for views, but they just kept renegotiating, renegotiating every year when they were making less ad revenue to the point where now it was way less. When I went to Curse, they said, oh, we're paying a higher amount. I was like, you're paying more than Machinima did? They're like, yeah, but we can't give you the managed partnership, so you're still going to get content ID claims and you're going to get lost revenue that way. So I didn't know if it was going to be more advantageous or less to be with Curse. There was no track record of, of evidence to tell how it was going to go. Okay. But on the other, he had lost the protection from automatic content ID claims that Machinima's managed partnership had provided him, meaning that videos of his with copyrighted music or video would have the money earned from them taken away. So I just Sometime said. in April, a company by the name of Poltavi approached Philip with a tempting offer. They told Philip that they could offer him more money than Curse was currently giving him, and more. They promised that they could give him another managed partnership as well as one other thing, mm -hmm. that they would find all of the parody videos that had become so popular and claim them for Philip, nope. placing advertisements on them and funneling that money to him. So, half of that's true, half of that's false. When I was going to join Curse, and I was telling everyone publicly I was going to Curse, this company contacted me and said, hey, we're interested, we know you have a good following, good viewership on YouTube, and we would like to make you some money. And what we're going to do is we're going to put you in a managed partnership right away. You're going to be one of like maybe 12 content creators we're trying to recruit right now. And we're going to promote your content with our, our management network. We're going to give you the same kind of a deal like you had over there with Curse. But we're going to manage you so that that way you don't get the content ID claims. Great. And that was it. There was no discussion whatsoever that they were going to claim detractor videos. That never happened. I don't know where that discussion came from. I don't know if that's from the misinformation that happened after the fact, which I will talk about in a moment when we get further in, because wait till you see what happened with these jackasses. Um, but that's completely false. That never I never agreed to that. That never happened. It was just supposed to be, I want the managed partnership. Now, just so you guys know, I smelled a rat, because I couldn't really find much information on this company, and it definitely smelled too good to be true to me. So here's what I did. I did department my channels from Curse, but I never partnered DSP Gaming with Pultavi, okay? I decided I was going to test them. So here's what I did. I told them bullshit. I lied to them. And I said, oh, uh, you know, I can't really get rid of my partnership on DSP Gaming until this set date because I'm already in a contract with Curse. So I can do the vlogging channel first and KO Gaming we can do. But we got to hold off on the DSP Gaming. Let's do those two first, and then we'll get DSP Gaming as soon as possible. I fooled them, okay? They agreed to it because they're stupid. So what happened was I had two of my channels with Poltavi, and the other I never partnered with anyone. It just kind of sat there, DSP Gaming, with no ad revenue for a couple days, all right? So now let's reveal what really happened, 
and then I'm going to tell you what happened in the end, okay? Tantalized, Philip removed his partnership with Curse and began struggling to enter a new partnership with Poltavi, despite being unable to find any information on them online. After being strung along for some time, he realized that he had been duped. The Poltavi week. was a front for another company, yep. Bavaria Media, who currently didn't have the clout with YouTube to offer him a managed partnership or meet any of their other promises. Flustered, Philip returned to Curse, who agreed to take him back one last time in May. So, here's what the end game of all this was, all right? I fooled them, and I had my vlogging channel and KO Gaming with them, but not DSP Gaming. I refused to give them DSP Gaming, and then I waited to see what was going to happen. Guess what? Lo and behold, they lied. They could not get me a managed partnership status, which was the reason I was going with them. I didn't care about claiming detractor videos. I never had any intention of doing anything like that. Like I said, I never did copyright takedowns, nothing. Never did I do any of that, okay? So, after a week, I'm like, where's the managed status, you guys? You, you said you were giving it to me on these channels, and I have two channels that have been with you for about a week, and there's nothing. To which they responded, oh, uh, sorry about that. We didn't mean that we could do it now. We mean down the road. What you really need to do is trust us and just, you know, sign over DSP Gaming's rights right now. Sign them up with us right now. Assign it to us. And then once it's with us, then we'll really work hard to get you the managed partnership. And I asked them outright. So you don't have a guaranteed date you can get it. And they said no. And I said, fuck you. And there's a way to disconnect channels from partner networks on YouTube just for this reason, for scammers. And I disconnected my vlogging channel and KO Gaming from them. said, fuck you. And I went to curse. And that was the end of them. And by the way, just for the record, I only spoke with one person ever it was from, not from Laveria, but from Poltavi. I don't remember the guy's name. It was basically only via emails. That was it. Um, I, I can't remember if we did a Skype call, but it was definitely several emails. Okay. And that was the only person I ever spoke with. It wasn't the president. It wasn't anyone like that. It was just supposed to be some line level guy uh, who was in charge of the partnership kind of deal there. And that was it. And that was the absolute positive end of my relationship with them. Once I severed those channels... I never spoke with them ever again, and they never contacted me ever again, okay? Supposedly, later that year, my detractors, of course, looking for drama, wanted to get to the bottom of the situation, and I wasn't going to publicly talk about everything that happened. So they apparently tried to contact these guys behind the scenes, and I guess they got in contact with them or someone else, and they were completely lied to. Apparently, they had them on a podcast, and they said things like that, like, oh, well, the reason... That Phil wanted to be with us because we offered to claim all his detractors' videos. That never happened. That literally never was discussed. It was only, I want the managed partnership. That's it. It was the only reason I wanted to go with them. I was already going with Curse, which was going to pay me more. Why would I want to go with them? It didn't make any sense, right? Um, <clears throat> I don't even understand where that came from because they outright lied. Essentially, what it was is they knew I wasn't going to go with them. And they needed to save face. So I guess what they tried to do was lie on the Detractor podcast or whatever about it. It was 100% bold-faced, blatant lies. They were 100% scammers. They didn't get scam me because they didn't get anything out of me. I was wise enough to not give them DSP Gaming because I wasn't stupid. So they got nothing. They got essentially two dead channels for a few days, and then they got nothing. And then they looked like idiots, and they got to appear on a Detractor podcast. So, hey, maybe that got them another new partner that they scammed. I don't know, but they got nothing out of me. <clears throat> Okay, it's time for the finale. Here we go. For now, Philip's short-term future seems somewhat secure, despite everything that has happened to him. He claims to be making good money from streaming on Twitch, oh. and his partnership with Curse will be at least enough for him to pay his bills. <clears throat> Even so, his viewership is steadily decreasing. Where he once had nearly 13.5 million views a month, this number has decayed to 1.84 million. It's way less now. If with Curse were to break, it's uncertain what five years do. later it's way he worse and i'm not with curse anymore either and as a joke amongst other content creators but he also serves as a warning to those same creators about the volatility of a fan base and how quickly it can turn against them all right here's the last part and i'm gonna have to read this to you because i'm blocking it during the production of this video philip and liana broke off the relationship after philip discussed liana's personal medical issues in a vlog Where is it? Philip now lives alone in his condominium. Again? Spelled my name wrong. 
kind of weird that he didn't get my name right once in this whole video. Um, false. The only truth of this entire discussion here is, yes, we did break off our relationship. And yes, I will admit, I did discuss personal medical issues in a vlog. Those things happened, all right? However, the way that this is phrased makes it seem like this is direct cause and effect, right? When you see this statement like this, in fact, here, I'll do it like this. Now you can actually see the whole thing. This literally makes it look like <clears throat> cause and effect, okay? Here's what really happened. We had already not had a relationship for almost two years, all right? And it was really bad to the point where we had already broken up. Exactly when, I don't remember, but it was definitely before that day when this happened. She was in the actual process of moving out. What she was actually doing was working with her friends to figure out, you know, the, the timeline or whatever. I was trying to be as nice as I possibly could be and give her the time she needed because I didn't want to kick her out of the house like an asshole since it was, you know basically a mutual deal that we were breaking up. I wasn't like, you get out or you get out. It was more like, okay, it's not working anymore. Let's split. Um, and at this point, if I remember correctly, she already had some of her stuff out of the house and was in the process of kind of like the second half, okay? But was she still sleeping here? Yes, at that time. Um, and this was a very weird situation for me. And here's why. We were no longer involved anymore. It was kind of like, you know, two roommates at this point until she was out. All right. I was trying to do the right thing, not trying to be an asshole and throw her out of the house or whatever. And I knew that she was emotionally very upset about what was going on. Okay. But I was, didn't know what exactly would become of it, honestly. Um, one day she goes to work when I'm streaming and during the stream, I get an urgent phone call. And I'm like, what could this be? Right? I don't know what it is. And I check the voicemail. And it's her boss at work. And her boss says, uh, Philip, this is so-and-so from the job. And we really need your help. Your girlfriend, fiance, I forget exactly how she phrased it, but that's how she said it you know, has had this panic attack at work. And it's, at this point, I've already discussed it publicly five years ago. I can publicly say it again. It's already out there, all right? She had this panic attack at work, and she's asking for you. She's calling for you. She says, where is he? Why isn't he here? I need his help. And I said, what? I said, we broke up. We're done. She's on her way out the door. Why is she screaming for me? It was shocking to me. I was like, this does it sounds like bullshit. I'm like, but I'm like, obviously it must have happened. Why would the boss be lying to me, right? Now, I didn't have the car. She was still using my car to get to and from work. I was allowing her to still use my vehicle to get to and from work, despite the fact that we had broken up, okay? So I had to find a way to get there. I had to get an Uber. I had got an Uber. I got there, and they were all. she was already basically fine by the time I got there, and they had said, we're going to take her to the hospital, no, I take that back. Completely wrong. It was the opposite of what it was the opposite way. They took they had already taken her to the hospital, okay? But the car was still at the job. So I had to take I'm trying to remember this. I had to take the Uber to the to the mall to get the car, and then I had to drive the car to the hospital, but I also had to pick up her stuff from the job, so I went inside and I had a discussion with the manager, and the manager was literally under the impression that, like, she was calling for me, she really needed me, and all this shit. And I was like, why? We're broken up. I don't really don't understand this. I just didn't get it. It was blowing my mind. Like, why is it she acted like we're still together? We're not. It's been, you know, a while that we, this has been determined or whatever. So anyway, um, I got the car from the mall parking lot. I drove it to the hospital, found her in, you know, in the emergency area, and... I already told this story in that vlog five years ago, but essentially I was blown away by how bad healthcare was. Essentially, they just gave her pills to calm her and literally had her sit there for five hours and do nothing. No doctors came and helped her. No one talked to her, no counseling, just sit there. So she sat there for five fucking hours doing nothing. And then finally they released her and said, just go home. 
Nothing. No help. We gave you the pill. We drove you to the emergency room. You sat here. We did nothing. Go home. So, of course, I've already criticized American healthcare about this because I was so flabbergasted at how bad it was. Now, at the time, I didn't announce to anyone yet that we had broken up. No one knew publicly. So when I came home, everyone wanted to know what happened. Is she okay? Is everything all right? Obviously, I was going to tell you guys that she was okay. People cared about her. She was a part of my life for a very long time. She was a part of my content. People were concerned for her and wanted to know what was going on. All right? I should not have said that she had a panic attack. That was my bad, and I am definitely in the wrong for doing that. It was her own medical issue. It was her decision if she wanted. She had a public presence. She had her own social media. It should have been on her if she wanted to discuss that with the public. It's my fault. I shouldn't have done it. The truth of the matter is my mind was so messed up at this time that I didn't know what to think, what the hell was going on. All right? Like, it was just so... The whole thing was so confusing to me. All right? And... I, by the way, no, it's not like, oh, I wanted to get back together with her or anything. That was never on the table. It was just like the weirdest situation. It's like she called out for help when she needed it, but then that's the only reason that she called. You know what I'm saying? Like she told her boss that we were still together and everything because she really had no one else to help her. And I think that is kind of manipulative. Let me be honest. We had already broken up and everything, and I feel manipulated by that. Like she was trying to use me for a little bit at the end there to try to get as much help as she possibly could. Maybe that's not to be blamed because I don't know if she had anyone else out here who she could rely on. So maybe I would have done exactly the same thing if I were in that situation too. <clears throat> okay? But it was just a really messed up situation all around. I was definitely in the wrong for discussing stuff publicly like that. But I absolutely personally feel that she was in the wrong for basically using me at the end there she was still using the car she was still living here for a while and even after the fact she wanted to come back and keep getting more stuff and i'm like what are you talking about we're broken up you're gone it's done i'm moving on with my life i can't have this going on an endless cycle of it has to end the end and begin again not end and oh but you're coming back and there's more involvement no that's not how it fucking works you know so anyway, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely positively 100% in the wrong that I did this, okay? I should not have talked about her private medical stuff publicly. In reality, it, it didn't even occur to me in my mind at the time that it was wrong to do. I should have, but it didn't. I was so mind-fucked at the time that everything was going on, okay? Shortly after this, she did fully move out. It was probably another week and a half, and she was gone. She, she gradually got her stuff out of here, and that was the end of that, Um. Philip now lives alone in the condominium. Of course I did. I mean, well, I didn't immediately get another roommate or whatever. But luckily for me, later that year, I met Kat. We started our relationship, you know. Within a year, we got engaged. Within another year, we were married. And I've been happily married ever since. And I'm in the best time of my life right now. This is done with, okay? I moved out of that. Now, the only thing I can say as a final thought about this whole thing, okay? I mean, I think I was just really dumb and I didn't realize that a relationship like that was not going to work, okay? She was too young for me. We were two different people who wanted different things from life but never really sat down to discuss that. There were times that were really good together, meaning, oh, when you're going on a vacation or you're going on a trip or you're able to go out and get a nice meal or shopping because I had money back then, everything was great. But as soon as we moved here and all the hardships started, oh, I don't have a lot of money anymore. I got to work way more to make ends meet. Uh-oh, we're getting swatted. We're getting DDoS attacked. We're getting this. We're getting that. We're getting every negative thing possible thrown at us. That's when the relationship essentially got tested. And when it got tested, we realized that's because we weren't supposed to be together. You know what I mean? It didn't work. We weren't going to be able to survive together with all that other shit going on. It was just way too much. And it got to the point where, like I said, it just didn't even make sense. We didn't want to air that stuff publicly with you guys. Because if we did, we felt it was just going to be even worse. It was already the public parts of our relationship that had led to people hating on us and saying the content was worse and all kinds of shit already. Why were we going to tell you everything else going on behind the scenes? It wouldn't have made any sense to do that, right? So, you know, it is what it is. At this point now, it's history, 
But I absolutely, you know, I, I regret a lot of the decisions that I made in that time frame. And yes, I do think that a lot of it was due to the fact that I was just being dumb and protective or stupid and making dumb decision after dumb decision, getting myself into massive debt, not thinking ahead, doing every possible bad choice, essentially, that I could for a long string of time. But the problem was every time then that I tried to get myself out of it, something else would happen to screw me over. And it became a viral thing to hate on Phil. You know what I'm saying? It became, this is the end of the video, by the way, now it's just the credits. It became a viral thing to hate on Dark Side Phil, to make Dark Side Phil's life miserable, to ruin every possible piece of positivity that Dark Side Phil could ever have. And any chance that I ever had to try to repair or, or, or come back from it, it would just blow up in my face again. And at that point, it became such a meme to hate on Phil, to hate DSP, that there was like no coming back. Now, admittedly, 2017 was a low low for me in my life. But thank God, that year was also the turnaround of my life. Because that's when I met Kat. That's when I started full-time streaming. And I changed the format of the content that I was putting out. Because if I kept doing what I was doing in this video, I never would have survived or succeeded. I would have continued to be immature, stupid, make the same mistakes, not listen to feedback, not improve, not get better, just be an obstinate, stubborn asshole. And that would have failed. I would have blown up in my face, and to this day, I would not be a content creator anymore. Likely, I'd be homeless if I didn't change for the better. But I'm here to tell you that I am proud of the changes that I have made to myself and to my content. I'm happy that I learned and not to say that I'm perfect, I'm certainly not, and I certainly make tons of mistakes to this day. I'm not, I'm an imperfect human, and I'm still trying to learn every single day. I am. But I'm so happy that not only did I find a way to stop doing those terrible fucking things that I was doing, but also to stop making the terrible decisions, and also, I basically proved myself to my audience that I was going to improve as much as I could, and people bought in. It wasn't like, oh, Phil's changing and now we're abandoning it. It was, oh, Phil's changing for the better and we're actively seeing this. People started watching This Is How You Don't Play, came and checked out my streams. My streams were way different than my on-demand videos used to be. They're, whoa, this is positive. This is fun. There's interaction. There's cool, chill stuff going on. This is, uh, Phil's a changed man. It's almost like since Phil got into that relationship with that other woman cat, that like he's completely different attitude on the streams now. You're right. Literally, you're right. It was a life-changing experience meeting my wife. It was. It blew me away. It made me a better man to meet someone like her. It changed me from my foundations all the way up through that top of my fucking hair. I'm a different guy now because I met her. And I'm so happy that I did because I don't know if I would have been here if it weren't for that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes things happen for a reason. And I think that maybe the reason that I went through all that fucked up shit is because at the end of the day... And at the end of all of it, there was a kind of a light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I'm saying? And I think that right now where we are is kind of that light. Not to say that things are perfect. Things absolutely, I hope, can get better. I hope that I can grow DSP Gaming now that I'm here full time and I'm not streaming on Twitch anymore. I hope that this can become successful again. I hope that I can get out of this debt that I'm still in. I'm still in crazy fucking back tax debt and all kinds of shit going on, you know? Uh, I hope that one day I don't have to live week to week, paycheck to paycheck. And I can take my wife on a honeymoon. That would be fucking outstanding if I could do that. But you know what? You take it all one day at a time, right? You don't get too ahead of yourself. I've learned this. And you're happy and grateful for the little things that happen every day. Right now, I'm incredibly happy with my home life. I'm in a much better situation than anything that happened in this video. And even though I have way less a viewership, way less engagement, way less views, I'm still able to make a living, do what I do, and I'm a happy person. And I think that's more important than maintaining any kind of a following like I had in 2010 on YouTube when I was virally popular and everyone knew who Dark Side Phil was. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. DSP reacts to Down the Rabbit Hole, Dark Side Phil. I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope that you learned from the project because I sure tried to add as much as I possibly could and put perspective. As with everything, take this with a grain of salt. This is my perspective. Doesn't mean that it's factually true. It just means that this is how I remembered it. And you know, the mind can somehow do funny things. I know for a fact there's been times in my life that I've misremembered stuff. So just understand, this is all subjective from my point of view. And I tried to make it as informative and interesting as possible. Okay? 
whether you watched on stream or on YouTube on demand, thank you. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the engagement today. Thanks to those who watched on demand. I hope you like the videos. Leave comments. Let me know what you think. Any super thanks were greatly appreciated. Thank you all very, very much, guys. Really, I really enjoyed doing this, and I'm very happy that I eventually got to do it. By the way, there's way more stuff that I can do in the future in regards to this kind of stuff. There's other things I can react to. If you liked this because it was my take on something that involves me, I could react to other stuff. What if I reacted? This is how you don't play. What if I react to the video that John Rambo and Howard made about me seven years ago? Why they broke their friendship with me, right? There's th other things out there <clears throat> we could do if you like this. So let's see. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, peace out.